Before jumping into directly into material flow systems, let us first try and understand a few terms of how the products are actually manufactured. So in some cases, the products have to start from scratch in the sense that the product has to be designed. And now here there are two words, designed and configured. Design is when the product design actually starts from scratch and from a customer need. And when we configure a product, it means that the basic product design exists and we, base, we remake the product or configure the product based on that existing design. So consider when I get a pizza from a popular pizza chain. Well, yes, I am designing my own pizza, but think of it. Am I actually designing it? Um, as a consumer, I have choice of three or four bases, which has already been pre-decided. Um, I have a choice of maybe four or five cheese, three or four sauces, ketchups. I can make it and the level of ketchups. So I have choices when I make my own pizza. But what choices I have and the extent of the choices is determined by that pizza chain. So in that case, the pizza is not actually designed by me, but the pizza is merely configured by me. So that's the first stage. Is the product designed or is it configured? Or in a majority of cases, the product may actually be pre-designed and a consumer may not even have the option of doing either. The next process is a very simple process is that the business has to buy the raw materials necessary to make the product. Next is we make the product, but again, there are different things that could be possible here. One is we use the raw materials and make a finished product directly. A second option is we break up the manufacturing into two parts. In the first part, we make the semi-finished goods, which is also called as modules or um, sub-assemblies. And in the next part, I mix and match those modules and sub-assemblies to make a certain finished product that my consumer requires. And the last part is uh, we, whatever product we have, um, we have to then deliver it to my consumer. And uh, we have three forms in which uh, the predominant inventory could be kept in my system. It could be a raw material inventory. It could be semi-finished goods or modules or assemblies or WIPs, work in process inventory as it is called, or it could be an finished goods inventory. Now that we know this, let's jump into this idea of a few specific types of manufacturing systems. So the first is what we call as engineer to order. Now in engineer to order, the whole process starts from designing the product. The consumer comes with the need that, hey, I need a nuclear reactor. And from that state that the consumer comes and says, we need a nuclear reactor or that we need to build a satellite for this purpose, whatever. That sets off a process where a fresh design is generated for the process. Specific raw materials are bought so that the design can be executed and then the manufacturing is done and then the goods are delivered to the customer. Well, make to order is slightly different. In make to order, we already have the designs and uh, the product is configured as per those designs. So the pizza example we used, um, or consider where um, I go to a tailor to get a custom dress stitched for me. Well, in, in case if the dress is a shirt, the tailor is not going to design the shirt for me. There are certain metrics uh, or templates of the shirt available. I look in the co catalog, select the kind of pattern of shirt I want, and then the tailor is likely to take my measurements and stitch that particular shirt for me. So in this case, um, the shirt has been configured to me and it's not engineered to me. In most made to order um, facilities, especially if they are more towards standardized made to order, in those cases, the facilities keep a raw material inventory and only the few raw material which are specific for that configuration are bought after the customer orders. But predominantly, a lot of inventor, uh, RM inventory is kept and that inventory is uh, kept based on previous forecast of raw material inventory. The next situation is what we call as assemble to order. Assemble to order can be one of those sandwich places where they keep um, semi-finished goods ready, inventoried in, custom, um, in their um, stock. Um, and as soon as the customer comes, they accept a customer order, mix and match those ingredients, and then deliver a finished goods to the consumer. 
So we have those color tinting machines in these uh, home improvement stores. So the color tinting machines have um, a white primer and uh, maybe 7 to 14 shades. And uh, then the 7 to 14 shades are mixed in different proportions to make the exact pink shade that a certain customer could want. So this is the idea of um, uh, an assemble to order. Again, here um, the semi-finished goods or WIP inventory is maintained and uh, without a customer order or is maintained based on the forecast of customer order. And the exact mixing and matching is done after the customer order is received. Well, made to stock is the last thing here that and made to stock includes everything that we see in a majority of the goods uh, in supermarkets. Here um, the goods are uh, made based on forecast. They are staged ready as finished goods and um, the, either the customers can pick the finished goods up from the retail store or in e-commerce situation, the uh, finished goods are stores, um, sent to customer locations. So the only customization that a customer could have in a made to stock situation is the location of delivery. Other than that, the product is pre-designed and uh, pre-delivered uh, to the location from where the consumer or the customer has to pick them up. Now, these uh, four systems that we saw, engineer to order, assemble to, engineer to order, made to order, assemble to order, and make to stock have very different um, consumer uh, satisfaction that they generate. So remember the order winner and the order qualifier discussion we had a little bit previously. So if my chosen order winner is flexibility, well, in that case, um, I should generally go for an engineer to order system because the engineer to order system would allow me to configure the order uh, exactly to the uh, requirement of the consumer. But an uh, immediate disadvantage is that uh, it gives me flexibility, but it, engineer to order products take a high time to be re uh, reach the customer. The delivery lead time to the consumer, the total lead time is very high from the time a consumer orders to the time the consumer gets the product. In made to stock product, the total lead time is substantially low. Um, similarly, since we are making each product individually, the manufacturing cost in ETO or engineering to order is high and the manufacturing cost of the made to stock is relatively low. Um, again, we should design facilities here so that in ETO, we don't know the exact type of orders that we are going to receive. So if you want to limit the lead time to a reasonable number, well, what we need to do is ensure that we design the facility to have relatively low capacity utilization. Because uh, if we go for high utilization, we'll have a traffic jam. And um, uh, just like in a traffic jam, cars move slowly. Um, we, our orders in an engineer to order facility with high utilization would move very slowly. Inventory cost, where in, in, in engineer to order or ETO, we don't have inventory. And all inventory is procured only after customer orders and signs off on that order. So in that case, uh, we have a very low uh, inventory cost in engineer to order, but in made to stock with um, all these material lying all over um, different stores and different locations and regions, the inventory cost, especially finished goods inventory cost is very high. And the last part is the scale of manufacturing. Well, engineer to order generally has general purpose machine is made in a job shop sort of an environment or a project sort of an environment. And so the scale of manufacturing and ETO is relatively low. But a made to stock is created in an assembly line of situation. So while the capacity cost of assembly is relatively high, but since we make in large volumes, the unit cost and per unit cost of capacity gets very low. And uh, the assembly line also lets us make a high volume of product and a scale in made to stock assembly line is very high. So the case here um, that we have to see is think of it, what exactly do my customers need? And then now when I know that this is what I'm going to offer my customers and this is what I'm not going to offer my customers, I can use these characteristics and then go on and design the specific uh, product delivery system that I need um, to satisfy the order qualifiers and order winners that I have chosen.